I want to do a quick high level overview of PureScript and its ecosystem. Who uses it and why? What are the trade-offs and shortcomings, especially for newcomers? In other words, I want to sketch out some sort of map of the ecosystem, resources, community, and so on. Let's start with the blitz round. Do people even use PureScript in production? Yes. Is PureScript just a Haskell for the front end? No, it's quite different. And you can also use PureScript on the back end. Why is PureScript not so popular then? Probably because there is some learning curve to it and there is nobody putting millions into its marketing. Is it better than TypeScript or Elm? These languages have different values and design goals. One cannot be purely better than the other. You have to see what suits you better. Okay, let's take a step back. Let's talk about currently main pathways to PureScript after some front-end experience or after some back-end. And if you're wondering what about PureScript as a first language, probably not. Too many balls to juggle. If you come from the front-end, luckily you can build on top of your knowledge. You can use most of your tools, bundlers, libraries, and even frameworks. You need to learn a new language, probably a new syntax, new features, and unless you're coming from Elm, ClojureScript, or something along those lines, functional programming. If you're coming from the backend, you have some catching up to do. Everything that I just mentioned, and it's gonna be easier if you have FP background. This is, for example, where I came from. And to be honest, even after years of using PureScript, I still cannot wrap my head around all the bundlers and package managers, but I know what to copy paste and search for. So this is what I wanna share. So why, where, and how would you use PureScript? PureScript is generally purpose programming language. You can use it in various domains. I used it on the backend in a typical microservice to shuffle data around. I also used it on the frontend in a typical React, single page application or user interface. PureScript transpiles to JavaScript, Erlang, soon Chess Scheme and others. And even if you limit yourself to JavaScript, you can put PureScript on top of Node.js or something and boom, you get a new runtime. And I don't want to talk about random language features. It's hard to sell a feature without talking about the particular problems to solve. So I'll just mention two things I generally love about PureScript and miss in other languages. First one is raw polymorphism, which is a feature, but let me explain why. Every time I have to do any data validation with other languages, I dream about using PureScript especially if you have to integrate with some legacy REST quote-unquote service with questionable data which needs to be validated and transformed. Their entities have lots of fields which are sometimes reused and sometimes the same. Some fields are optional here but required there and so on. When you have a statically typed language, you have to write a lot of boilerplate to deal with all the differences and nuances in the data types, which is annoying. On the other hand, when you have a dynamically typed language, you have to deal with the types of data, optionality, validations, string conversions, which is also annoying. Raw polymorphism takes the good out of both. You keep the type safety and still write pretty flexible, polymorphic, structural, dynamic, whatever you want to call it, code. Let the example speak for itself. The parse data function can be used with any entity or data type that has a field update at. It tries to parse the data string as a proper date. If you ignore all the synthetic noise, what the type signature says is take any data type. You can think of it as a JSON, for example. Don't care about all the fields. Just focus on updated at. We take it as a string. We do some validation, conversion, parsing, and it doesn't matter. And we return as a proper maybe date. And all the rest of the field stays the same. And imagine that you have a bunch of functions like this. You can combine them like Lego blocks to deal with any data. It's amazing. There is some message event, parse the data on it. It works. If you have some users that has country code and names and first names, and you want to validate and parse all of them, no problem. Parse the date first, then parse country code, then parse anything you want. If this sounds curious, check out a joy of working with JSON using PureScript on this topic. But let's move on. My second favorite thing is not a language feature. It's community. Not gonna lie, PureScript is an amazing community. It's welcoming to the beginners, hardcore enthusiasts, and everyone in between. The PureScript Discourse and PureScript Discord are both great places to ask questions and answer them. And at this point, I feel the responsibility to ask, if you are an asshole, please go somewhere else. There are plenty of languages that will welcome you. And while we're on the topic of learning, uh, let's talk about resources, books, and documentation. The free PureScript by example book, which contains several practical projects, is a great resource for PureScript begin. Alternatively, you can start with a functional programming made easier book, which takes you from zero functional programming knowledge to a full stack web app written in PureScript. You can also visit the PureScript documentation repository on GitHub, where you can find articles, guides, in-depth learning resources for beginners and more. For example, it links to PureScript cookbook, 
which contains various recipes for peer scripts. On top of that, there are a few cool personal resources. My personal favorites are Thomas's articles, Mark's articles and guides, and Jordan PureScript reference. Another important topic is tooling. PureScript comes with excellent tooling and editor supports with mostly instant rebuilds. The recommended build tool for PureScript is Pago. When it comes to coding, you can use any of your favorite editors via Pure's IDE, which is an IDE server that comes with compiler, or PureScript language server, which is respects the protocol and builds on top of it. For details, see the dedicated documentation section on editor support. Pure Suite is one of the coolest things. It not only hosts the API documentation, but also lets us search through it by packages, module function names, and type signatures. For example, if we search for a function that takes two types and returns a boolean, we get back equals, greater than, and so on. There is also a formatter for pure skip source code with pretty good default. There is no reason not to use it. For more information, see editor and tool support and recommended tooling for pure skip series on this course. Let's talk about some JavaScript backend specific stuff. If you import libraries from JavaScript, you need a package manager. You can use NPM, which is commonly used, Yarn or whatever you want. You also need a bundler to deal with JavaScript imports, smoosh your files and so on. You can get started with ESBuild. Most popular alternatives are Webpack and Parcel, but you can probably make things work with whatever you prefer. Speaking of frontend, this is the last big topic we'll cover because it's not relevant to everyone. The most important thing to know is how to use JavaScript code with or libraries and how to integrate with JavaScript frameworks. Long story short, it's simple but boilerplate. -y. And first I want to emphasize that you can mix and match JavaScript, TypeScript, PureScript, and whatever code. You can keep your old code and implement new components using PureScript. Moreover, you can migrate one piece at a time. You don't have to abandon what you have and do big rewrites. That's what happened in one of my previous companies. The JavaScript TypeScript React codebase over a couple of months turned into PureScript codebase. When we want interop with JavaScript, which is also called the foreign function interface or FFI for short in most of the documentations, this is what we do. The simplest way to use JavaScript code from PureScript is to give a type to an existing JavaScript value using a foreign import declaration. Let's take the square functions, for example. Here's some random JavaScript file. We export one function that takes one argument and returns the square of an argument. On the pure skip side, we import this function, but we explicitly give it types. It takes a number argument and returns a number. And then in the same module, or maybe in some other module, we import test and run square with a number, for example, five, and we get 25. And there is no magic to it. We bridge the gap between the worlds by explicitly adding a type signature. That's it. However, note that functions in PureScript are curried and don't tolerate side effects. It doesn't matter what it means for now, if you don't know, but both of these require learnings and a bit of practice. Nothing to worry about. Most of the time, libraries take care of all of this. Here's a real world example. On the JavaScript side, we just re-export everything from React Player. And on the PureScript side, we import this implementation, but at a type. The React component comes from the PureScript React library. Note that we are explicit only about the types and things we actually care about. React Player accepts a bunch of other props that we can just ignore them. And then we use it. If you know React, this should make sense to you. If you don't, then it doesn't matter. Calling PureScript function from JavaScript is straightforward as well. One thing to keep in mind is that PureScript functions become JavaScript functions of a single argument. So if we declare some sort of function first, which takes two arguments, but only returns the first one, on the JavaScript side, we have to call it first with 10 and then two, and the results could be 10. You can read more about interrupt in the book, docs, reference, or anywhere else. At the moment, the most popular UI frameworks in PureScript ecosystem are Halogen and React. You can check out real-world Halogen or real-world PureScript React, which demonstrates the same project using both frameworks, so you can compare them or get some inspiration. Halogen is a declarative component-based UI library for PureScript that emphasizes type safety. Here's a simple example that we can click around. We have some state and we increase, decrease it. And React is React. There is a whole React basic family of PureScript packages, which include basic components, specific components, starter applications, hooks API, and so on. And if you're wondering what about other frameworks and libraries, it depends. If you're lucky and somebody already done the work, you can use a PureScript wrapper library and don't worry about JavaScript at all. If not, then you have to do some prep work. How much depends on how rigid and highly coupled the library is. And pro tip, don't forget to check with your friends on Discord. Maybe you can collaborate with somebody. Maybe somebody done already half the work or quarter of the work. You can make your life easier. Okay, so where do we go from here? You can get started with PureScript website or getting started guide. You can start learning with free PureScript by example book, or start talking on PureScript Discord server. You can also start playing with PureScript at trypurescript.org, 
or last winter together with two sets of my colleagues, we shared our experiences of using PureScript in production and you can read about it. And last but not least, just go build some stuff.